Hi, welcome to Joyous Tribe TV. In this enlightening video, Apostle Joshua Selman explores the profound topic of discerning the will of God and the essential steps to grow spiritually. He shares insights on how to sharpen your discernment, empowering you to seek and understand God's purpose in your life. This impactful teaching is designed to inspire and challenge you on your spiritual journey, encouraging a deeper connection with your faith. Don't miss this opportunity to transform your understanding and experience of God's will. Be blessed as you watch. Understanding, please write it down. Discernment through understanding. Discernment through understanding. The Bible says they understood the times and that that discernment came through understanding. Most people are unable to maximize seasons, please listen, in their lives because they are bankrupt of discernment. What is discernment? The faculty of spiritual perception. Please write it down. That when we say you are somebody who has discernment, it means you have trained your organs to be able to perceive the impulses of the spirit. Discernment is the faculty of spiritual perception. The ability to know what God is doing the ability to know what the devil is doing, the ability to know what is happening even within the cosmos is called discernment. It is a superior faculty that the believer in partnership with the Holy Spirit can sustain. And the Bible lets us know that one of the indices for measuring the maturity of a believer is the strength of your discernment. Are we still together? That strong meat belongs to them who are of full age, it says, who by reason of use have exercised themselves to discern between good and evil. It takes discernment to know what is really good and it takes discernment to know what is really evil. Because as far as the cosmos is concerned, good can look like evil and evil can look like good. Are we together? So this tribe of Issachar trained themselves. They stepped up their, their discernment, their ability to perceive things happening within the heavenlies. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There is no believer I know who can excel consistently when you are dull of discernment. The world is too spiritual for you to excel bankrupt of discernment. Respectfully speaking, there are people who have died today that they shouldn't have died if they had discernment. Am I right on that? Yeah. There are many, many things that have happened around our lives, ministries, businesses, homes that are credited directly to the absence of discernment. The ability to read the writings on the wall, the ability to know what the Holy Spirit is saying per time, there are businesses that many of us should not have gotten into if you had discernment. Now, watch this. The Bible says the Spirit speaketh expressly. You know, that some in the latter time will deviate from the truth and they will give themselves to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. My expression there is the fact that the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Holy Ghost is not always talking, but the Holy Ghost speaks. But many people have not trained their discernment to recognize the voice of God. You may want to make reference to my teaching, the voice of God. I did a teaching there helping us to understand that when we talk about the voice of God, we don't just mean the speakings of God. We mean every spiritual mechanism that can be used by God to communicate his will and his intents to the believer. It's called the voice of God. So the voice of God is not just limited to the sounds of God. It is, it is a holistic capture of every mechanism that can be deployed by God to communicate his intent to the believer. The objective of the voice of God is that the believer comes into the awareness of the will of God. Because the jurisdiction to enjoy God's power, God's favor, God's grace is being at the center of the will of God. 
In fact, the assignment of God's power is to bring you from wherever you are into the will of God. Are we together? So many believers have not been able to train their discernment. There are many fathers today who the realm of the spirit kept showing them that an attack was coming on their children and because they did not train themselves spiritually to discern they could not do anything about it there are many people who by signs similitudes scripture dreams god has been showing them several things positive things to happen and negative things to avert but because they have not trained themselves to discern let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that in these end times, it is costly to be dull of discernment. It can cost you your life. Hallelujah. Jesus looks at Nathaniel, a man who just finished insulting him. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And he looks at Nathanael and here's what he says. An Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile. It takes discernment to speak like that. Jesus looks at the man called Peter. And even though he saw a spirit behind Peter, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. And he said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. In other words, there is nothing wrong with you as a person. Your compassion and your good heart is an advantage for the kingdom. But I need to separate you from this ugly spirit that is trying to destroy you. Discernment. In the book of Acts, the Bible talks about the apostles. Paul. Are we together now? Yes. How that a damsel came and met them and this damsel was using divination and bringing money and gains for her people. And when she saw them, she began to preach that these are the men of God who have brought glad tidings. You find that in Acts chapter 16. The first 24 verses talk about the, the Bible says this happened for many days. And one time, he got angry, angry in his spirit. Are we together now? And he looked at her, Paul now, being grieved in his spirit. He commanded that spirit to come out of her. That's how they landed in the prison that they used praise and worship to come out of. This was what got them there. Hallelujah. Many people are dull of discernment. There are some of us who never seem to get free from trouble. You walk headlong into trouble. Every scheming of darkness against you walks because there is no discernment. When the Holy Ghost is saying pray, you are not even sure he's the one speaking. And quite honestly, you don't care until you land into trouble. There are many people about to start journeys that the Holy Spirit keeps pointing to them. It does not have to be a journey that ends you in danger. We are talking with respect to the will of God, not good or bad. There are many things that you will arrive well and yet you are already dead. Once it is not the will of God, you are still in trouble. So you, we don't rate life based on good or bad. We rate life based on the will of God or outside of the will of God. There are many, if the devil wants to destroy you, he will schedule many good things to happen in your life that are outside the will of God. Are we together? For instance, giving you a visa... When is the will of God for you to be in Nigeria? Now, that may not be an evil thing, sociologically speaking. But you will travel not only out of the will of God, out of your destiny, out of so many things. Why didn't God stop Jonah from entering the boat? When Jonah was paying for the boat, I can imagine that every passenger that was entering that boat, they, I'm sure the angels were saying, oh God, so all your business, Oga, is for nothing. You are about to lose your property because one person got a boat and was on his way going. And then when the people were throwing everything, he kept quiet and was sleeping. It was when they casted lots and it fell on him. He said, truly, okay, let me talk now. I am a prophet. God sent me to Nineveh. But I know God. He's a merciful God. If I talk to them, they will repent. I don't want them to hear the message so that you will help me and punish them. So what do we do with you now? Throw me out. 
You thought the people would say, ah, that's too much. They threw him out. They had lost their property and everything. Are we together? Thank God you're a prophet. It threw him out. Listen. God has helped us to come thus far today by this faculty of discernment. I look back at my life and I can see where glory and shame was separated by the distance of a needle, only waiting for discernment. That if you had taken one wrong step, your life would have crash landed for nothing. Hear me, God is speaking to someone in this end time right now, the believer must train yourself and I'm going to teach you how. You must train yourself to step up your discernment. You can have five people come, even if it is Judas. Not every kiss is a sign of love. A kiss that is supposed to be a sign of love and intimacy can be a strategy to the enemy. The one I'm kissing is the one that must die. When he came and kissed Jesus, Jesus looked at him and said, you betray your master with a kiss. He didn't say sorry. He didn't say anything. He just left him. There, for some of you who put your cheek for everybody, you need to um, you understand it's a figurative statement. Some of us are so fragile emotionally that even when the devil brings his mouth near you, you just believe that every sign of a kiss means love. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Every handshake is not a handshake of fellowship. There are handshakes that are, that they are signals of deception. Every prophecy is not prophecy that edifies you. No matter how it sounds, it is the ministry of the Spirit behind it. It is not everything that glitters that is gold. Are we together now? Say discernment. Please shout it. Say discernment. There are many children today whose destinies would not have been wasted, respectfully speaking, if their parents had discernment. Remember what happened when Samson was about to be born. Manoah asked a question and they said, no, 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 please, let the angel return and give us details as to this child. We know that since this child came by prophecy, he would not be an ordinary child and instructions came that he would be a Nazarene and his hair would not be cut. And that became the symbol of his strength until he decided to kill himself by himself. Are we together now? Listen to me. Every mantle and every destiny has the, the spiritual code of operation that protects that oil. Listen, let me share with you a, a powerful secret. There is a consecration for every mantle. It's not enough to know you have a mantle. You must know the formula given by God to protect it. There are certain graces that is in the place of worship that that anointing is released. You can be anointed and you do not know by discernment what activates the working of the spirit within you. And you will find out your life will look like you are not called. Are we together? There are people because of the kind of destiny you have. For you, the formula God gives you is every time you want to see a miracle, hold hands with your husband or your wife and agree. That is it. No matter what deception, once two of you hold your hands and pray, the truth must come out. It may not be a formula for everybody, but by discernment, you can step into what becomes your secret code of operation. Unbelievers know this, but many, many believers are bankrupt. When it was time for the prophet to prophesy, he did not feel like prophesying. He said, bring me a mistrel. And as soon as they began to pray a mistrel, the Bible said the hand of the Lord. He didn't say the hand of the Lord was coming anyway. He understood the secrets that provoked the hand of the Lord. Are we together? Those who lack discernment in this end time, ladies and gentlemen, whether as men of God, whether as business people, one operation of the spirit of discernment can be the difference between victory or defeat in the life of a believer. Some of you are about to get into businesses right now that will make you cry from March till December. You've not had discernment. You don't care.
Some of you are about to drive good people in your life because you do not have discernment to see. Everybody who comes to me must be a millionaire. And someone will come looking like, like someone who just came out of prison. Whereas that's the person the anointing is on to help you. But because you lack discernment, some of you have driven everybody holding the key to your door. Now you are wondering why the door does not open. Because if you see John the Baptist, he does not look like a prophet. He will come with rags and sometimes wear eating locusts and wild honey. Who wants to be a friend to such a man? However, that's the man God has chosen. Are we together? I remember when God started speaking about coming to Abuja, I've shared with you that story to help you. It took three years of wrestle, wrestle. Before that time, I could be having a program somewhere. I would travel into Zaria, arrive around 5.36, go and have a meeting, and then by the next day, I'm out of the way again. But when it began to come, I said, Ah, God, what is this one again? I struggled with the spirit verifying and re-verifying and re-verifying. When God finally gave me the verification, I went with my eyes closed. Listen, let me tell you the truth. For some of you, God is speaking to you right now. You are taking too many careless destiny steps and ignoring discernment. The mercy of God has been shielding you, but I don't know who I'm speaking to. You need to mark time. Speed is not the same as rushing. Listen, do you know that speed is a function of clarity of direction or clarity of destination? If you are looking for a house, say you enter a close or an avenue, once you don't know the house, you slow down. Is that true? Be so that you don't pass it not knowing. And then you honestly ask questions. You can now ask someone, sorry, where is the birthday celebration happening? Oh, turn left, right. You see that blue car? That's the house. The moment the direction is clear, there's no limitation to speed again. There are many of you, you have not gotten direction for ministry yet. There are many gray areas around your life and yet you are running. For you, a prophetic word tonight is you need to slow down because the distance you will need to turn back on, it may be too far. You are already running, speed in the wrong direction is adding burden to yourself. Is someone getting what I'm saying now? Discernment. Who told you it's God's will for you to be in UK? Who told you it's God's will for you to be in Abuja? I've told you, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Greener pasture is not a physical location. Greener pasture is where the voice of God is for you. There are people suffering in every nation, including our dear nation. It is not a physical location that this, that 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 um, that that spells out your prosperity, but where the voice of the Lord is. He said, "The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want." And Isaac sowed in that land. Hallelujah. Our fathers of old, some of them were not very educated, but they would never do anything until they verify. The subject of God said was strong in their generation. God has not spoken to me, oh, thank you for what you have said, but let me inquire of the Lord. It is the reason why they had, they had tremendous success with their lives. Our generation now respectfully is so scientific. We say wisdom is profitable to direct, and our wisdom is Sophia, not divine wisdom. It has been landing us in all kinds of trouble. God is speaking to someone. You want to follow the order of that tribe of Issachar. You must slow down in your life and be sure of the voice of God before you take steps in your life and destiny. Is someone listening to what I'm saying? Man of God, don't assume it is time to start church. What makes you think you should start church? All my contemporaries, even sons that I raised in ministry, they are in ministry. So what? Anna the prophetess, how many people do you think she raised? And yet she remained in the temple. Ah, may you never go where God is not Oh. I'm praying for you. May you never go where God is not. Amen. Hallelujah. Moses said, do not let us depart from here. If your presence will not go with us. You see, let me tell you. Life will propose so many wonderful things. They don't have to be evil, I repeat. 
the journey of discernment is not about good and bad alone please hear me let me repeat it again the journey of discernment is not about good or bad alone it's about being in the will of god lack of discernment will lead you to many good things that will end up becoming a burden to your destiny because they are not luggages that were allocated for you to carry your flight will be impeded because you have carried all kinds of things hallelujah i believe in common sense i'm not a fool but i believe in the voice of god i'm also not a fool are we together common sense has landed people in trouble the oldest man on earth today is not more than 120 years I'm, I'm not sure the highest I saw was 141 along the road to Ekiti who just died but I don't know Guinness book of record or what what's that that thing I don't know who they have as the world oldest person but let me tell you the truth this scripture is old and the Spirit of God is he was there when creation began Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6 says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. 7 says, be not wise in your own understanding. It says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. For there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, the Bible declares. It says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There are many people who have no business being poor today. Their problem was not intellectual bankruptcy. Their problem was that they do not sustain the ability to discern. In the days of Noah, whether you were a businessman, whether you were an architect, whether you were a politician, after 120 days, you were going to die if you were not in the boat. You were not in the ark. It's as simple as that. There are times and moments in history, ladies and gentlemen, where it is not about the wisdom of the wise. It is about the ability to discern the voice and the will of God. My prayer for myself and my prayer for this ministry all the time is that I find myself at the epicenter of the will of God. Now, let me tell you the truth. There is a risk if you embrace the way of discernment. There will be a lot of disruption to what you call order in your life. If you are not willing to endure that disruption, then forget about a glorious life. Hmm. Are we together? Do you know what would have happened to Joseph? We never heard of Joseph and the exploits of his carpentry again. That man just received the burden of fathering Jesus to maturity and had to sacrifice a lot. But he knew that he was in the will of God. What of Mary? I'm sure as a young virgin, the girl just had a plan towards her life and destiny. Listen, I, I pray for our generation. May we not be too organized to the point that God cannot bring us now to fit the mold of his will for us. Let's be careful with this over-dependence on intellect. I submit to you that when God started with us, this was not, let me tell you the truth. The way of the spiritual man is very, very strange. There are many times in the journey you don't even know where you are going to. You have to depend on the one leading you, not an assurance of where you are going. You trust the person more than the destination. Follow me is the mission. We live in a world today that is full of guarantees. Can you guarantee me that if something happens? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Are we learning? The men of Issachar had understanding of the times. You must know how to discern. You must know how to discern. You must know how to discern. Lord, this business idea looks wonderful and my brain seems to agree with it. But can you give me a moment? Let me go to God in the place of prayer and hear what he has to say. God will only take responsibility for what he initiated. If you initiate it, it means you have vetted that you have the power to manage the outcomes that come there. Hallelujah. That is why we lack power in the body of Christ. It is not about physical strength. It is about discernment. More love. 
more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life let me tell you how god trained us at the beginning of every season we used to teach people those days that your birthdays are not time to just jump around and put balloon and celebrate balloon is only after you have spoken with god three days two days to people's birthdays they will go and lock themselves lord what is the next phase of my life but right now people celebrate their birthday one year in advance and god is not in it and they move back 10 years Pastors will lock themselves and go and pray to fast, not just for power. Lord, what are you saying? This is how we got here. I'm telling you sincerely. Do you know what the next five years is going to be like? Do you know what the next 10 years is going to be like? I've shared with you my story. When God in this, this was when, you know, internet was in its infancy. When God gave us an instruction to carry our audio teachings, put it online, and his angel would take it across the nation. And that was it. Discernment. That one step opened up doors of untold opportunities. God is speaking to someone. It's not because you cannot see the power of God. It's because you have thrown away the value of the voice of the spirit and discernment. There are, you don't hear again that someone locked himself. Where are you? I'm spending time with God for three days. What for? I need to get direction for the next season of my life. Our over-dependence on brain work is what is making us failures. I'm saying this respectfully speaking. More love. That's what we want to see. More power. More of you in my life. A year or two before we moved to Abuja, I remember when we started having so many visits from the U.S., a group of people came from U.S. and they came, they went back with such zeal and transformation and they did not even tell me. They went to open an office for me in the U.S. And then they just announced as a good news that Apostle, just to let you know that we have opened an office for you. In fact, um, you can be sure right now that when you come to the U.S., there is an office, say breakthrough. No, no, I'm not being sarcastic. That's what most people will call it. What do you call that kind of favor? Remember, we are advocates of favor. But I said, thank you for that opportunity. Let me carry my good old childish principle that has worked so far. Lord, what are you saying? God did not even waste his time. And say, there, there is a way you walk with God, Ba. As you are approaching him, you are, you are, your heart is so connected. God does not need to start wasting his time talking to you like an unbeliever. It's like a husband and a wife. There's a way a wife already knows the answer. Honey, she stops there. You already know what the answer is. You can grow into that level of intimacy with the spirit. I hope you know what I'm saying now. That someone is conjuring an enchantment against you and an energy comes upon you. You wake up in the night, you can't explain what is it, but Makatos Kedebakata, that no divination, no enchantment against you. Abba, sit down and just say, This person is no. Scriptures like arrow just fire out from your spirit. Is someone learning? Hear me. The order of Issachar is the survival pattern for the last days. You need to master the art of spiritual perception. You must be so close to the Holy Ghost that you can, you can perceive the impulses of the spirit. 
this looks like an open door but I don't know why there is a restraint in my spirit even though it's a great door please keep it open let me go back to God God what do you have to say and you stay there till he speaks you don't let your tiredness answer you on behalf of God and you say I've prayed for three hours I assume he say yes no are we together this was the secret of the, the valiancy of great men in the Bible. Should I pursue, they will go and inquire of God. Many non-Christians and diviners do that till today. They will never take any action, whether in business, in whatever, until they have an assurance from heaven. Let me tell you this. Some of us that you see that look like we are great, I confess to you, I'm speaking to the globe, it is not because of anything in ourselves. We have simply mastered the childishness of staying till his voice comes. Mm, staying till his voice comes. But when that voice comes, it comes with tremendous power and energy according to Ezekiel 2 and verse 2. And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me. So you can find a man look so slow in destiny but in two months, God will do something with that person that will cover up for 10 years. And you are wondering from whence came this energy? The energy came with the voice. The energy came with the voice. These are missions to UK, you see, and the US. It was already on plan for a few years. Shared it with the leaders. I'm sure they are used to me now. Once I say we'll do something and you hear me keep quiet about it, just leave me and God like that. I just kept quiet since God kept quiet but when the word came it came with energy it came with power man of God don't assume because everybody is doing conferences you get up and go and do it don't assume because everybody is opening branches you go and do it I'm saying this respectfully speaking don't assume no father according to your prophetic program for me how many children should i have ah i went to school how can i be asking god how many children you'll be surprised that in god's mind is three you now go and give birth to five those two of course god is merciful but you'll be surprised the the headache you will get from the remaining two and you are now asking god is this how you want to punish me I'm sorry if I'm touching an area that is a bit touchy, but it's, it's very important. Hallelujah. Three days before Koinonia will start, before the service, I went back to God again to pray, crying my heart before him. And I said, God, I'm human. I can make mistakes. Please, if it is not you and it is not your voice, I pray and I cry unto you that you will speak to me. And I vow under God, if God had told me he was not the one, I would have come here and apologized before the whole world. I'm not too proud to say sorry. Discernment. Discernment. To know what you ought to do. You need to go back right now and start re-examining your life in light of this thing. And you will find out that some of you have been running anyhow. Anything that comes, once it makes sense, you jump at it. No, spiritual men don't work like that. It is not to make you judgmental. There are times you maximize opportunities. Don't get me wrong. But a spiritual man is one who discerns. Okay? This is a great business. Would you give me one night? Let me just pray. Let me just seek counsel. No, no, it must be now. Tell the person, may God bless you. God who supplies Jehovah Jireh, he will come back again. Don't put yourself in any kind of anything that needs your being too fast that you even have to throw God out is already bringing trouble. Speed without God is a highway to destruction. Make sure he's the one who becomes the captain of your speed. Is someone learning? Let us become a people of discernment. It will help you to know what to be part of. It will help you to know what to not be part of. Don't jump at things because of the physical expression and the flamboyancy that they carry. Spiritual people do not work like that. It is not to make you, this teaching is not to make you judgmental. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yes. But you must learn to be spiritual. You must learn to be spiritual. You will know what kind of gifts to accept. 
someone can come and give you a gift and you look at it and something you should be glad about you see ba once you invest in building your spirit respect the impulses that come from that spirit why am i being troubled over something that should give me joy you may not know what it is but just stop where you are and go back to the place of prayer lord this job that is supposed to give me joy is it just human fear or it is you restraining me how can i get a contract of 20 billion i should be rejoicing but now I'm, I'm, tomorrow I'm going to collect the award letter and I cannot sleep in the night. If it's an attack, let me cast it. What is there? But let me tell you what many of us will do. You will first send the text, Apostle, there's a spirit fighting my breakthrough. It cannot be the will of God that I got 20 billion naira. Stand up and pray with me. Oh. And you see the thing about God, ba? because the Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. His assignment is to restrain you according to the level of your yieldedness. The moment you begin to struggle with the Holy Ghost, it is fearful when God leaves you to yourself. <clears throat> if you're with me, please say amen. amen. I don't know why God is speaking this to someone, but this is a very serious prophetic message for someone tonight.